Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, we're going to be tackling uh, yeah. the fascinating world of nutrition, yeah. specifically for older adults. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I got to say, you gave me some fantastic research this time around to really dig into. Mm, I'm good. I'm glad. Including Chapter 12 from Interdisciplinary Nutritional Management and Care for Older Adults. Yes. Which uh, I'm excited about because I think this is something that a lot of people kind of take for granted. Absolutely. Um, you know, when you get older, you got to start thinking about this stuff. So get ready to uncover the hidden reasons why eating well can sometimes be tough as we age <laughs> and more importantly what can be done about it exactly so it's not just about like knowing what to eat right it's about understanding all those other factors that come into play it really is yeah so what are some of those like <laughs> You're i don't even know where to start i right? know we're talking about this complex mix of things um physical changes mm -hmm. medications even mental health oh. can all have a huge impact. Yeah. And they all influence mm -hmm. each other. Right. So, you know, it's really tough to separate them. Gotcha. So it's more than just handing someone a food pyramid and saying, here you go. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. you got to do more than that. Yeah, just follow this and you'll be fine. Yeah. It's not that simple. Yeah. Take taste buds, for example. As we get older, mm -hmm. our ability to taste salt can decline. Oh, really? Yeah. And this means that someone might oversalt their food. Wow. Without even realizing it. Interesting. Which could lead to health issues down the line. Yeah, that makes sense because, like, if you can't taste it, right, you just keep adding more and more and more. Exactly, exactly. Until it tastes right to you. Right. And if they're used to eating a certain way mm -hmm. for their whole lives, yeah. they're not going to want to change. Right. Even though their body is telling them to. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you really need a personalized... Approach for each person. Absolutely. And that's just one example. This chapter really dives into the importance of seeing things from the older adult's perspective. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Because you know it's easy to forget that they have different needs and, yeah. you know. Their individual experiences and feelings are paramount yeah. when it comes to making nutritional choices. Yeah. And if we ignore those, right. we're really doing a disservice to our patients. Right. So, like, if you're not feeling well, yes. food is probably the last thing on your mind. Exactly. Precisely. Yeah. And the research shows that patients often connect their reduced food intake to feeling unwell. Yeah. Both physically and emotionally. That makes sense. It does, yeah. Add in the potential side effects of multiple medications mm. and maintaining a healthy appetite can be a real struggle. Yeah, like if you're nauseous all the time. Exactly. That's going to affect it will. how you feel about food. Yeah, and then it becomes this vicious cycle. Mm. You know, they're not eating enough. So they're not getting the nutrients they need. Right. And then that makes their other health conditions worse. Oh, wow. So it's this downward spiral. It sounds like the support of family and caregivers is really important in this whole process. It absolutely is. Like they need that extra help. Yes. To get through this. But it's not always easy. Right. You know, sometimes the best intentions can backfire. Oh, how so? Well, the chapter tells this story about relatives urging their loved one to eat more. Mm-hmm. But this actually led to them eating less. Oh, yeah. Because of the pressure. Really? Mm -hmm. So, like, they felt like they had to eat more even though they didn't want to. Exactly. And it just made them feel worse. So how do we walk that fine line between offering support and making things worse? That's a great question. And that's where this multidisciplinary approach comes in. Okay. You know, it's about recognizing that nutrition isn't just about food. Right. It's about understanding the whole person. So we're talking about a team effort here. Yes. Doctors, nurses, dietitians, mm -hmm. and even psychologists. You got it. And the chapter points to the Elderly Nutrition Program study as a prime example of why this team approach is so vital. This study found some pretty big differences in food preferences. Oh, really? Across ethnicities. Wow. Which highlights the need for meal plans that are culturally sensitive. That makes sense mm. because, you know, we can't just assume that right. everyone wants to eat the same things or yeah. has access to the same foods. Right. Absolutely. It makes you realize yeah. how much our backgrounds and experiences yeah. influence our relationship with food. Absolutely. And like how much those can change over time, too. They can. Mm -hmm. And a multidisciplinary team can take all of that into consideration. Cultural background, mm. personal health history, mm -hmm. individual preferences to create a plan that truly works for each person. Yeah, it sounds like that individualization is key to motivating lasting change. 
It is. And this isn't about forcing anyone to eat anything. Right. It's about giving them choices within their nutritional guidelines mm -hmm. so they feel in control and empowered. Yeah, I like that. This is especially important when you consider food neophobia. Food neophobia? What's that? Yeah, it's basically a reluctance to try new foods. Ooh. You see this a lot with fortified foods or supplements, mm -hmm. which can be crucial for older adults. Right. But not always the most appealing. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, would you rather have like a delicious. It's a big bowl of ice cream. Exactly. <laughs> a protein shake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how do we get past that? Well, bombarding someone with new foods probably isn't the answer. Yeah. You know, the research actually suggests focusing on education and gradual exposure. Oh, OK. You know, help them understand why these foods are important for their health mm -hmm. and then find ways to introduce them slowly. Like baby steps. Exactly. So maybe sneaking a new ingredient into a familiar dish. Or starting with small portions. Yeah. Kind of like dipping your toes in the water before jumping in. Exactly. And remember, change takes time. Yeah. You can't expect someone to overhaul their eating habits overnight. Yeah, that's true for everything, right? It is. It yeah. is. It's a process with ups and downs along the way. Yeah. You know, there are going to be days when they just don't feel like eating healthy. Right. And that's okay. You got to give yourself some grace. You do. You do. So it sounds like having a supportive network, whether it's family, friends, or healthcare providers, mm -hmm. can make all the difference. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And that support can take many forms yeah. from practical help with grocery shopping and meal prep mm -hmm. to emotional encouragement and positive reinforcement. Absolutely. So it's really a holistic thing. Yeah. Mm hmm. We've covered a lot of ground. We have. But the key takeaway here yeah. is that we need to move beyond simplistic solutions. Because you know everyone's different. Yeah. Everyone has different needs. It's exactly. It's about embracing the complexity of the individual mm -hmm. and recognizing that there's no one-size-fits-all answer when it comes to nutrition for older adults. I couldn't have said it better myself. And that's just the beginning. Stick with us because next we're diving into how healthcare providers can become more aware of their own biases. Well, that's good. When it comes to nutrition. Yeah. And how we can overcome those potential blind spots to better serve our patients. It's a crucial conversation. It is. And one that I'm eager to have. All right. Well, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and talk all about that. So, you know, the number of the most insightful points this chapter raises is yeah. the need for healthcare providers to be aware of their own biases. Yeah. It's easy to unintentionally project our own ideas about food onto our patients. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It's like that saying, don't judge someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. Exactly. We can't assume everyone has the same access to resources okay. or, or shares the same values. Hmm. Like someone living in a food desert. Yes. Faces different challenges than someone with a farmer's market down the street. Precisely. And even within the same community, individual circumstances vary widely. Oh, totally. Someone with limited mobility might rely on prepackaged meals. Yeah. While someone with dietary restrictions might need to cook from scratch more often. Right. So creating a personalized care plan is crucial. Yes. Like you can't just hand out generic advice and expect it to work for everyone. Exactly. This chapter really stresses the importance of involving the older adult in creating their own plan. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Getting them involved. Asking questions, listening to their concerns, mm. and respecting their preferences is essential. I think that's key with everything, right? It is. Like people are more likely to stick to a plan if they feel like they had a hand in creating it. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of saying, yeah. you need to eat more vegetables. Right. Maybe we should be asking, mm -hmm. what are some vegetables you enjoy? Yes. How can we make them easier for you to include in your meals? That's a great example. It's about working with the person, hmm. not dictating to them, yeah. finding solutions together. Yeah. And sometimes that means getting creative, maybe exploring new recipes. Oh, fun. Trying different cooking methods mm -hmm. or connecting them with community resources yeah. like meal delivery services or cooking classes. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. That collaborative approach yes. really shifts the dynamic. It does. It becomes a partnership mm -hmm. where the older adult feels empowered. Yes. Not just told what to do. And that sense of empowerment is critical for lasting change. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, yeah. it's up to the individual to change their eating habits. 
Speaking of change, yeah. this chapter mentions food neophobia. Yes. That reluctance to try new foods right. can be a big hurdle, mm -hmm. especially when encouraging older adults to diversify their diets. It's an interesting concept, especially when we're talking about fortified foods or supplements. Mm -hmm. You know, they can be vital for meeting nutritional needs. Mm -hmm. But if someone's already hesitant about new foods, yeah. these products might not be appealing. Like if you don't like trying new foods, right? why would you try like a powder or something that you've never had before? It doesn't sound very appetizing. Yeah, exactly. So how do you overcome that? Right. We can't just keep offering the same things over and over until they give in. Yeah, we got to do something different. Right. The research suggests focusing on education okay. and gradual exposure. Yeah. You know, we need to help them understand why certain foods are important for their health. Right. And then find ways to introduce them gradually in a way that's palatable. Right. You know, make it appealing. Like maybe sneaking a new ingredient into a familiar dish yeah. or starting with tiny portions, kind of mm -hmm. like dipping your toes in the water before jumping in. Exactly. And yeah. remember, change takes time. Yeah. You can't expect someone to overhaul their eating habits overnight. No, it's a process. It is. With ups and downs along the way. Absolutely. And that's why ongoing support is so vital, mm -hmm. whether it's from family, friends, healthcare providers, yeah. or community resources. It takes a village. It does. The are... network of encouragement and guidance can make all the difference. It can. This has been eye-opening. It has. The number of factors impacting older adults' nutrition is incredible. Yeah. And it's clear that a personalized, holistic approach is essential. I completely agree. And one of the most powerful takeaways for me is the emphasis on collaboration. It's not just about healthcare providers telling people what to do. Right. It's about working with the older adult to find solutions that truly work for them. It's about recognizing that everyone has a role to play yes. in supporting healthy aging. Absolutely. Whether you're a healthcare professional, uh, a caregiver, yeah. a family member, uh, or a friend, Yeah. being informed, compassionate, and supportive can make a real difference. Well said. As we wrap up this part of our deep dive, yeah. I'd like to leave our listener with a thought-provoking question from the chapter. Ooh, okay, hit me. What are the system barriers to nutrition that healthcare providers need to be aware of and work to overcome? That's a powerful question. It is. Because even with the best intentions, mm -hmm. policies, procedures, yeah. or even ingrained attitudes within the healthcare system right. might be creating roadblocks. They can, yeah. And we don't even realize it. It's crucial to address those systemic issues alongside the individual challenges yeah. as we continue to learn and grow in this field. We've covered a lot, but it feels like we've only just scratched the surface. We have. There's still so much to explore when it comes to supporting older adults' nutritional well-being. Okay, so we've talked about the individual challenges, yeah. the role of caregivers, mm -hmm. and even those system barriers you mentioned. Right. But what about solutions? Like, what can we actually do to make things better? This chapter does offer some hope, right? Absolutely. And one of the most promising solutions it highlights mm -hmm. is the power of a truly multidisciplinary team. It's something we touched on earlier. Yeah. But let's really break it down. Okay. I'm ready to dive deeper. Right. What does that team look like in action? So imagine an older patient admitted to the hospital after a fall. Okay. They're already at risk of malnutrition, mm -hmm. maybe due to age-related changes or other health conditions. Right. And now instead of just having a doctor prescribe a diet yeah. and a nurse make sure they eat it, mm -hmm. we bring in a whole team of specialists. Okay, I'm picturing it. Yeah. Who's on this team? So first, you've got a dietitian who can assess their specific needs okay. and create a personalized meal plan. Mm -hmm. This isn't just about calories. Right. It's about making sure they're getting the right nutrients yeah. to support their recovery and overall health. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Someone who really understands the science of nutrition and can tailor recommendations to their individual needs. Exactly. Then you might also have a physical therapist okay. who can help address any mobility issues oh, right. that might be making it difficult to shop for or prepare food. Oh, I like that. It, addressing those practical barriers is so important. It is. Because it's not just about knowing what to eat. Right. It's about being able to actually get it and make it. Exactly. And here's where it gets really interesting. Oh. We might also bring in a psychologist. Yes. A psychologist for nutrition. I'm intrigued. Yeah. So think about it. If someone is struggling with depression or anxiety, mm -hmm. 
those conditions can have a huge impact on their appetite and eating habits. That's true. So a psychologist can help address those underlying emotional factors okay. and provide support for making positive changes. Wow, now I see how all the pieces fit together. Yeah. It's a truly holistic approach mm -hmm. that considers the whole person, yes. not just their physical symptoms. Precisely. And the chapter highlights that this kind of multidisciplinary care can lead to significant improvements. Oh, good. Not just in nutritional intake, mm -hmm. but also in overall health. Wow. And even quality of life for older adults. That's encouraging to hear. It is, yeah. But I imagine coordinating all these specialists takes a lot of effort. It does. Like, how do you get everyone on the same page? Right. And the chapter acknowledges that right. healthcare systems aren't always set up to facilitate this kind of seamless collaboration. Right. It's not just about having the right people. Mm -hmm. It's about having the right systems in place. Yeah, that makes sense. Things like clear communication channels. Okay. Shared goals mm -hmm. and mutual respect among team members are essential. That makes sense. Yeah. We also talked about cultural sensitivity earlier. Yes. How do we make sure those preferences are respected within this team setting? That's such a crucial point. And the chapter really emphasizes that cultural awareness should be woven into every aspect of care from the initial assessment mm -hmm. to the development of the meal plan. Gotcha. It's about asking questions. Yeah. About dietary traditions, religious beliefs. Right and any food aversions or allergies. And maybe even involving a cultural liaison or translator if needed. Absolutely. To ensure clear and respectful communication. Exactly. The bottom line is we need to think beyond those simplistic solutions mm -hmm. and embrace the complexity of individual needs. Because everyone is different. They are. And what works for one person might not work for another. Exactly. This chapter has really challenged us to rethink our approach to nutrition care for older adults. It has. It's not just about telling people what to eat. Right. It's about understanding their individual needs, their preferences, yeah. and working with them to create a plan that they can actually stick to. I agree. It's a call to action mm -hmm. for healthcare providers, caregivers, mm -hmm. and really anyone who interacts with older adults to be more mindful, informed, and proactive in supporting their nutritional well-being. Well, we've reached the end of our deep dive. We have. What a fascinating conversation. I couldn't agree more. It's always so interesting to delve into these topics. Yeah. And it always leaves me with more questions. Yeah. Like, okay. what's next? What new innovations might further enhance our ability to address the nutritional needs of older adults? That's a great question. You know, technology is advancing so rapidly. Yeah. I think we're going to see some amazing things in the years to come. Like imagine personalized apps or AI powered tools mm. helping bridge the gap between healthcare providers and older adults. Yeah. Tailoring recommendations to their specific needs and preferences. That would be incredible. It's an exciting frontier. It certainly is. Yeah. Who knows what other breakthroughs might be just around the corner? Well, that's all the time we have for today. But we'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. What resonated with you today? What questions are bubbling up? Keep the conversation going because this is a topic that deserves our attention. Until next time, stay curious.